Hello and welcome to a motion edition of Apple A Day. In today's episode, we're going to create this rotating slideshow. I'm calling it a carousel slideshow. It contains 37 drop zones and it's about four and a half minutes long. But don't worry, I'm not going to walk you through setting up that many drop zones in motion because that would be boring. I've supplied a starter project which already has the drop zones positioned in a perfect circle. I've supplied the Dropbox link to that motion project in the description below. So pause the video and go ahead and download that now, and then resume when you have the project open in Apple Motion. So I'm assuming at this point you've opened the Carousel Slideshow project. If you go ahead and open the Carousel group, you'll see 37 drop zones. I'm just going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and click on Drop Zone 1, and go over to the Inspector and to the Image tab. Just to quickly go over the process, this drop zone graphic was added to Motion, then it was converted to a drop zone by changing the type to drop zone. And that's this menu right here. When you do that, this source media option is published so it appears in Final Cut Pro when this project is saved as a template. I manually had to then publish the pan and scale properties as well. And if I look at these now, I know they've already been published because it says unpublish. And then once I had that in there, I duplicated it 36 times, but I still had to go into each one and publish the pan and scale properties. If I look at the project properties by typing in command J and select the project tab, you can see all of the published properties. So after that, the next thing I needed to do was position each one of these drop zones. If I change the viewing angle of the project to top, we can see the position of each one of these drop zones. And as you can see, they've already been placed into a perfect circle. Switching to front view, you can see that they're all in the same plane as well. The setup for this was a bit tedious and I've spared you of that. So thank me by liking and subscribing. Anyway, I just wanted to briefly go over that setup. So now all of that is done and you don't have to worry about it. But at this point, the carousel slideshow is static. If I scrub through the timeline, nothing's happening. There's no animation. So let's get it animated. The best way to do this is to simply move the camera rather than the slides. So let's take a look at the slideshow to examine everything that's going on. So the camera moves from slide to slide and then holds on to each slide for a few seconds and moves on to the next one. This is done using a camera behavior called framing. Framing moves the camera to a specified motion layer to the point where that layer will then fill the screen. The great thing about this behavior is you have total control over the animation of the camera movement. So select the camera and the timeline. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And under the behaviors menu at the top, I'm going to go into camera and select framing. The framing behavior is automatically created using the in and out points of the camera. The camera is already positioned to start at the first slide, so we don't want to move it until we're ready to show the second slide. So we want this behavior to start at 4 seconds. So select the behavior in the timeline and type in plus 400 to move the behavior ahead by 4 seconds. Then move the playhead to 7 seconds and type in the letter O to mark the out point of the behavior essentially making the behavior only three seconds long. So the first thing we want to do for the framing behavior is to tell it which layer or which slide or drop zone that we want to frame. To do that, select the behavior and click on the behavior tab in the inspector. Then drag drop zone two onto the target property. Let's play this back to see how it looks. You know, that's not too bad, it moves pretty smoothly. But if we look at the final version, the camera kind of bounces out to reveal the slides in the background, and then it moves back onto the drop zone so it fills the screen. So let's go over some of these behavior properties to see how to achieve that. Now, note that I'm not going to be going over every aspect of the framing behavior in this tutorial. I'm just covering what I'm setting in order to achieve the effect that's needed for this slideshow. So the first thing we want to do is set the path offset. The path is the movement the camera makes from its current position to the destination position. You can adjust that path by using the path offset properties. So to move the camera out and then back in, we want to offset the Z position. I'll open this up by clicking on the disclosure triangle and change the Z value to 2000 pixels. I'll run this again to see what it looks like. Hmm, it moves out a bit, but it's moving too fast, and also we're getting this weird angle. The camera is not straight on the drop zone. So to fix that, we need to change the orientation property. I'll change it to Orient to Final. This means that the camera will orient itself to be on the same plane as the target layer. I'll play that back, 
and that bad angle issue has been resolved, but the movement's still too fast. The problem seems to be that the camera arrives at the target about halfway through the duration of the behavior. It's not using the full three seconds for the movement. The next property is the position transition time, and this is set to 50%. Well, that explains what the issue is. What that means is the position transition is only using 50% of the duration of the behavior, which is one and a half seconds. Well, we want that to be three seconds. So I'm gonna change this value to 100%. So it uses 100% of the duration, making it three seconds. Let's play that back. That's much better. To smooth out the movement a little bit more, we need to change the transition property from a constant speed to ease both. This will ease in and ease out the movement so it appears smoother and not so jarring. I'll play this back and that is indeed much smoother, especially when it slows down onto the target slide. That's it, that's all we need to do for the movement. Now here comes the crappy part. We have to duplicate this for the rest of the drop zones. I'll go over the process for a few of these, um, so in the timeline, I'm going to select the framing behavior that we just made. I'm going to right click on it and choose duplicate. And then I'm going to type in plus 700 to move it ahead in the timeline by seven seconds. Then select the next drop zone, drop zone three, and drag it onto the target for this behavior. Then I'm going to right click on this behavior and select duplicate again, type in plus 700 and drag in drop zone four. I'll do this one more time for drop zone five. I'll just scrub through to make sure this is correct. And so far, so good. And now I have to do the rest of the drop zones up to 37. So a couple of things while you're doing that. Sometimes when you type in the plus 700, it might move the playhead seven seconds instead of the behavior. So if that happens, just click on the behavior and make sure it's selected and then type in plus 700 again. That usually fixes it. Now, obviously, this is going to take you some time but uh, at least I didn't make you position all of those drop zones as well. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so when that's done, you should now have a complete slideshow. It's now time to add some finesse. If I go to the final version, you can see that there's a slight zoom effect happening on each slide. The camera is not static. We can do that simply by adding a throw behavior to the camera. So with the camera selected, I'll go to behaviors again, and then down to basic motion, and select throw. Over in the inspector under behaviors, I'll click on the throw velocity disclosure triangle so I can see all of the axes. And we just need to set the Z velocity to minus 35. This will move the camera towards the slides. So if I play this back, you can now see a subtle movement for each slide, kind of panning in a little bit. And that's much better than it being stationary. So we're almost done. We just have to set up some of the camera properties. So right now, we don't see any of the slides in the background. If I switch to top view, we should be able to see all of these slides back here, and they should also be out of focus. So let's take care of that. So select the camera and go to the inspector under the camera tab. The far plane is how far the camera can see, and we need to change that. I'm going to change it to 50,000. And while we're at it, we also need to change the near fade value to 1675. I'll explain that a bit more later on. Okay, so now we can see the slides in the back, but they're only slightly out of focus. By the way, if you're not seeing that it's out of focus, go to your viewer and on the top right under the render menu, make sure that the depth of field is selected. All right, so let's fix the out of focus. So for the camera, open up the depth of field properties by clicking on this show button, change the DOF blur amount to 55, the focus offset to 15, and set the near focus to 200 and the far focus to 5000. And finally, change the filter type to defocus. This gives a truer out of focus look. And again, I'm not gonna be going into detail about these camera settings for depth of field. That's a subject for another tutorial. Okay, playing it back, that plays a lot better. It looks great. I'm just gonna move the playhead so I can see these slides that are over on the right hand side of the circle. When I play it, and the camera moves out and in, the slide fades out as it moves towards the camera. This is on purpose because we don't want the slide to simply blink off and on when it gets too close to the camera. And that's achieved by setting that near fade value. That was the value that we set to 1675. So when these slides come too close to the camera, they fade out and it seems very natural. Okay, so that's it. 
your slideshow template is ready to be exported to be used in Final Cut Pro. So under the File menu, select Publish Template. I'm going to call this Carousel Slideshow. I'm also going to select the option to publish as Final Cut Generator. I'm going to choose a category, and I'm going to put mine in the Apple a Day category that I already have. I'll click on Publish, and now let's move over to Final Cut Pro. I have a blank project already open, so I'll switch over to Templates on the top left and go down to Generators and into the Apple a Day category. And there's the published template, Carousel Slideshow. I'll drag this onto my timeline, and if I scrub through it, it plays perfectly. So now we have to add our slides. I've got a bunch of sample images that I'm going to add for myself, and I'll drag these onto the project. And then I'll select the template in the timeline and drag these images into the drop zones one at a time. Once you scroll down this list of drop zones on the right, where what you're looking at is beyond what you would normally see because you scrolled down, you then drag an image into one of these drop zones, and as soon as you do that, the scroll bar resets and it goes back to the top. So that's very frustrating. I wish Final Cut Pro would fix that. So every time I drag an image into a drop zone that's later on in the slideshow, I have to scroll down again. Because as soon as I do that, it resets, then I gotta scroll back down and then drag another one and repeat that process. It's a real pain. Anyway, I just wanted to make you aware of that issue. So I'll just fast forward through this process until I have a complete slideshow. So looking at these slides, this second one is a perfect example as to why these additional parameters needed to be published. I'm talking about the pan and scale properties. This vertical image is too large at 100%, so I need to scale it down. I'll do that right now by adjusting the scale property. Okay, so that looks much better. It probably makes more sense to make these adjustments at the same time that you add your slides. And that's pretty much it. I now have a slideshow, and then I can add music to it, and then export a final video. I hope you were able to follow along okay, and I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. My name is John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.